بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله عليه وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيت في الله in a beautiful well-known hadith which is also in Arbain and Nawawi and this would be the fifth hadith which is a very important hadith which talks about uh, the concept of bid'ah and that this hadith is from one of the usul of Islam in that this hadith affirms those principles for accepting deeds in Islam and as we mentioned and as, as we'll get into uh, very shortly uh, in the hadith an Umm al-Mu'mineen Umm Abdillah Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha qalat qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fa huwa rad ruahu Bukhari wa Muslim wa fi ruwaya في مسلم من عمل عملا ليس عليه أمرنا فهو رد. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in the hadith uh, narrated the mother of the believers Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها that she said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever does something new in this affair of ours then it is rejected. And in another na narration, whoever does an action which is not in accordance with this affair of ours will have it rejected. And there are some great benefits that Imam Abdul Mahsin al Bad, half of Allah Ta'ala, that he mentions with regards to this hadith and distinguishing the meanings of these two uh, hadith. But we will not get into that right now, but we'll just talk about some of these benefits or some of the benefits uh, of this hadith as is mentioned in the text that we've been looking at, which was uh, compiled by Musnid al-Qahtani. And so he said the first benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us, uh, illustrates the superior uh, that this hadith uh, is a very important issue. This hadith illustrates a very important issue and that many of the scholars of hadith uh, derive and teach this hadith or these ahadith uh, because Islam uh, is built upon it. Islam is built upon these uh, narrations, that these narrations make up such an important part of Islam as we mentioned. Uh, and we'll get into that shortly on how that could be the case. Uh, another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the permissibility of technia or te uh, te technia. And this means uh, uh, this is uh, something amongst the Arabs especially but you find that this is a sunnah in Islam uh, because of this. And taqniya meaning referring to a kunya, referring to a, a nickname, so to speak, or a name which references a lot of times the father of so-and-so or the son of so-and-so or the mother of so-and-so uh, or the daughter of so-and-so. And we find that from the, the kunya here we have uh, Umm al-Mu'mineen, the mother of the believers, which is uh, a title that uh, we can't even aspire to, uh, being in those of the Ummahat al-Mu'mineen, the wives of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, radiyallahu ta'ala anhunna ajma'een, and also uh, Umm Abdullah, in this, in this narration, it says, an uh, an uh, Umm al-Mu'mineen, Umm Abdillah. Uh, it was narrated upon the mother of the believers, the mother of Abdullah. Umm Abdillah. So this is a kunya. So this hadith illustrates for us the uh, permissibility of using kunyas and that this is something uh, that was a tradition, an Islamic tradition. Uh, 
uh, another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows us the importance of uh, striving to for the jawami' akalam that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wasallam uh, often uh, gave in many of his narrations in many ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wasallam would um, would often speak with very brief words with immense meaning and that the words would be easy to memorize to me to preserve his sunnah and easy for understanding you'll find this with many a hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and that this is more gentle for the listener because if you have something that's long and protracted and I hope that my speech is not too long and protracted that a lot of times people get bored people get distracted people get tired uh, people just don't want to listen they tune out so the more precise and concise the speech is uh, like the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and powerful in meaning the more chance it has with sticking with the listener another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also illustrates for us the uh, obligation to gain understanding of uh, of our deen uh, and to understand the rulings of ibadat, of worship, and that those things which, and learning about those things which uh, destroy or spoil your ibadah, and that those things, and those things which uh, make your ibadah rejected, and those things which make the ibadah false, and that it shows that it is not sufficient just to have ikhlas, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do whatever deed you like. And unfortunately, this is what many people, especially in this day and age, I probably would say this more so in contemporary times, that people feel that they can almost make any way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any path to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala totally devoid of following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in fact having mukhalafat kathira, you know, many differences with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is a very dangerous thing and it's so widespread. How many Muslims can you probably name and, and you can think of that you know and perhaps even family members that just, you know, it's, it's sufficient that they're a Muslim. They pray how they want to pray. They pray when they want to pray. They fast when and how they want instead of mutab, instead of following the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's going to get to the next point we're about to come to. Uh, and so another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the obligation and the importance uh, to... Uh, know the reasons and the conditions for having our deeds accepted. And as we mentioned, those two conditions are ikhlas lillah wa mutaba' nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That they are sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are following the way of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And this uh, is immensely important, and this is why in the beginning we mentioned that this is an asl from the deen. This is an asl, uh, a foundation from amongst the foundation principles uh, that the scholars derive regarding the religion of Islam. Why? Because the foundation of Islam, the foundation of having your deeds accepted is that you do them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they are done in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that means it's a foundation because your deeds are not going to be accepted if you just have sincerity to Allah and you worship Allah on falsehood. For example, the person who uh, prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 20 rakat, raka, uh, 20 rakat fi fajr. They pray 20 prayer units for Fajr. Now, you would think that's an increase 
in something. So the one who looks uh, ex from the external position, who's a non-Muslim, looks to that, and people of bid'ah and people <coughs> of ignorance, <coughs> they will look to this, and they'll say, hey, that's an increase. That's gonna, that should bring you closer to Allah. But in fact, it's the opposite. That's not the case. Because, again, it has to be done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and in accordance with how Muhammad ibn, ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it. And we know that the Fajr prayer will remain unchanged until Yom Al-Qiyamah. That it is two unit, it is two prayer units. And we have many ahadith uh, and ijma uh, of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, consensus about this. So there should be no mystery that the Fajr prayer is only two rakat. Three will not benefit you. Four will not benefit you. Five will not benefit you. In fact, it will destroy the two that you were ob uh, obliged to perform. And that's the whole point of going back to the uh, Al-Fad and the, the, the statements that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the Hadith, مَنْ أَحْدَذَ فِي أَمْرِنَا هَذَا مَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ فُوَرَدْ Whoever does something in this affair of ours will have it rejected. Or, مَنْ عَمِلَ عَمِلًا لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْرُنَا فُوَرَدْ The Rudd here means that it's rejected. It is rejected. That does not mean that the person is a disbeliever. It does not mean that the person, all of their deeds are batil, unless there's shirk al-akbar, which destroys all their, their good, and they've left the fold of Islam. No. But rather, this means the deed in which the bid'ah took place in is rejected. So, for example, the person who prayed that three, three rakat fajr, that fajr is batal. It's not accepted. So it's rejected by Allah Azza wa Jal. And how do we know that? Because the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam said, Man amala amala naysa alayhi amruna furan. Whoever does something, a deed, which is not in accordance with this affair of ours, will have it rejected. Another point I want to mention, aside from what the uh, is, is in the, the text here, is that bid'ah that we're talking about, this is not bid'ah logawi, as the scholars mention, uh, which refers to innovation uh, linguistically, in that saying that anything new, for example, I just listened uh, on the news uh, a story about the Chinese having uh, solar panels and they float them on a lake and it's a, a new uh, innovative way of uh, producing energy. This does not include that. That is not an ibadah. So the point being is that bid'ah related to your worship. This is what is rejected. If it is an innovation in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's rejected. Not the fact that now we have uh, headphones or we have cell phones or whatever the case may be. The technology, which is new. But it's not rejected because it's not from ibadah. And that's I hope, is clear. Uh, another benefit that was mentioned with regards to the mutaba' or muwafaqa muwafaqatan hadiyya rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, being in accordance in agreement uh, with the guidance of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned and he says that bin uthaymin and that's um, uh, an invite or a for anyone who has the explanation of bin uthaymin who that he he gives immense details with regards to mutaba, mutaba uh, lin Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, following the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and in short, so this uh, Musnad al Qahtani is mentioning that Ben Uthaymin gives it uh, goes into depth, and he's just going to give these categories. He says in order for something to be in accordance with the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then it must. Uh, Follow the reason it was practiced, the type, the same type of act of worship, the uh, same amount, and as we mentioned in the example, for example, the amount of uh, fajr is two rakat units. The one who prays three rakat, they don't have muwafaqa in the qadr, in the amount of rakat, 
in the amount of the ibadah. They change the amount of the ibadah, even though there's muwafaka to jinsihi. There is an agreement in the type of worship. He didn't come, uh, you know, defining salat in a new way, but rather the one who prays at three rakat fajr, they increase the amount. But the reason was the same, and the jints or the type of ibadah was the same. But the, they increase the, uh, the amount. Likewise, وَقُدْرَهِ the also the uh, or, or or sorry wakafiatihi and also doing it in accordance with the way the Prophet ﷺ. So so the Prophet ﷺ did not pray three rakat units of fajr. So that means also that's a violation of the kafiyah of how the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam did was a manihi, and also the, the, the time of the prayer, so or the time of the, the ibadah, that it should be in agreement. that means you can't make hajj out of the season of hajj. You can't make uh, Ramadan other than the f fasting, the holy month of Ramadan. But you can make qada, you know, you can make uh, expiation or for that miss, for those missed days that you missed, for women or for men, for whatever the case may be. However, that is not considered Ramadan, but it's considered Qadha. It's considered making up what you missed of Ramadan. So that means you're not going outside of the time. But if you were to say, no, this month is now Ramadan. It's going to be easy for me. I'm a sports athlete. I can't fast during that holy month. We have a lot of uh, games at that time. I'm going to fast Ramadan now 30 days. No, you can't. Now you've changed the Zaman. You've changed the time. So that would be a Bidah as far as changing that act of ibadah with regards to the time. So I believe that's clear, bi'idhnillah ta'ala. He also mentioned makanihi and also the place. I can't say, well, you know, I, I, I'm from Seattle, Washington, so and the mountains are so beautiful. I love hiking and stuff. I think that's a good place to make hajj, you know? Let's just do it that way instead of going the difficulty of Mecca and the expenses and, you know, let me just make hajj there in, in the trees in the forest. Okay, and around the lake, of course, I can't do that, and that goes outside the Makan, the place that's a violation of the place, among some of the other violations there. So, I believe that's clear. Uh, another benefit of this hadith, uh, <clears throat> uh, he mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Mulk. Uh, the one who created life and death, or death and life, to in order to test you to see which one of you is best in deeds. And he is Al-Aziz Al-Ghafur. So, uh, and then he said, Qala the, the people of Tafsir, they said, I, uh, Alhamdulillah. Excuse me. Ayya akhlasuhu wa aswabuhu. That the most sincere and the most correct. So that is that, that, that statement of the Salaf. It's actually a statement of the, hadith, uh, of the Salaf. He didn't mention where, but I've read it countless times <coughs> from uh, some of the uh, Ahl Tafsir. It's uh, a state, uh, so a statement of a tabi, I believe. <clears throat> and he said about that ayat, he said, "Akhlasuhu wa aswabuhu," meaning the 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 deeds that we're being tested with, the, uh, how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is differentiating between us, is by being uh, in order to be the asan al amala, you know, the one who has the best deeds, is by being. The most sincere, meaning your sincerity is to Allah, there's that first condition for having your deeds accepted. And Thani, the second, is mutaba, that your deeds wa aswabuhu. And aswabuhu meaning the most correct. How is it correct? Correct because it's in accordance with the Prophet. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also uh, shows us the danger of bid'ah and innovating in the religion of Allah. And another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the that it's not accepted uh, that someone, if a mubtadi'ah, 
someone who's an innovator, does an act of innovation, regardless of their innovator or not, <clears throat> but that goes uh, against the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ, an act of innovation in worship, that it's not accepted, as we mentioned. And that's from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, as we said, that it's mardud, it's rejected. And also the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, <laughs> The Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith that uh, and beware of newly invented matters. For verily every newly invented matter is an innovation and every innovation is misguidance. Every bid'ah is, is dalala. Even though you have other people Saying otherwise, they're saying there's bid'ah hasana, there's bid'ah this, there's bid'ah that. Prophet ﷺ didn't distinguish. He said, well, dalala. All of bid'ah is dalala if it's you're talking about related to worship. And he said, well, dalala ten finnar, and all uh, misguidance is in the hellfire. And a last benefit I'll mention, and he brings some more, but we'll, we'll keep it short. He says, also, that this hadith is a warning against the innovation which is known as Qur'aniyin or Qur'aniyun. And for those who are unfamiliar, those are those people, and you have them all over the West. You have them in uh, Muslim countries too, and probably all the Muslim lands as well. Those people who say, we believe in the Qur'an, we accept the Qur'an, but we don't, we reject the sunnah, basically. That the sunnah uh, is... You know, some of it's uh, not authentic and all other kind of reasons. <clears throat> and so this hadith is a warning against that bid'ah. That's a very dangerous bid'ah. And as we mentioned prior to this, Ahl bid'ah have different levels and Ahl sunnah has different levels. So some people are pure Qur'aniyun, then they wouldn't even be considered Muslim because they reject uh, the the asl from usul al din which is following the Prophet wasallam, because the the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah wasallam, the Prophet wasallam, told us about Allah. He received revelation on wasallam. Allah commands us to follow Him in the book of Allah subhanahu wa taala, wa Allah wa rasul, and obey Allah and obey His Messenger. So then, the person who is a Qurani. They, in fact, they reject Islam. And in fact, they reject the Qur'an. Why? Because in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa 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 rasul. And in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا يَنْتَكُوا عَنَ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَىٰ إِلَّا وَحْيُمْ يُحَىٰ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an says, and He doesn't speak from His desires, but rather, uh, verily it is, uh, revelation which was revealed to him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know that the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu wa sallam is revelation. So the one who rejects the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu wa sallam has rejected the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the statements of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And that means they have rejected the Quran. And if you rejected the Quran and the Sunnah, what kind of Islam do you have? You have nothing of Islam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.